Hey beauties, welcome back to my channel. I think Makeup Mondays are getting progressively more and more raw as the weeks continue. Not only am I in a robe with wet hair, but I have my little twisty turban towel in. I want my hair to air dry for as long as possible because I have a new hair tool to try and I figured I might as well test it out on camera and share my honest review with you. And this is the order I would normally get ready anyhow. I typically will shower, throw on a robe, do my makeup, and then do my hair. And I have a bunch of new makeup products here to test as well. So even though these videos start out a bit rocky, they always end up being the most satisfying transformations in the end so you just have to trust the process with me and we're gonna get started we're going to be using the new Tom Ford eye color quad creme in shade 36 tiger eye this will be the first time I've ever tried this palette these colors are gorgeous it's a warm neutral palette this is the color story that I typically live in so I'm going to start with eyes and I'm going to prime my eyelids with the LYS triple fix full coverage brightening concealer I love this concealer, but it makes the perfect eyeshadow base. Doesn't look dry or crepey, doesn't emphasize lines or texture on my lids. I hope everybody who celebrates Easter had a wonderful Easter weekend. It's so funny, I got my dates mixed up. So several months ago, we were talking with my parents and we were planning on having them visit. We usually get together as a family for Easter. And I guess when I looked at my calendar, I got confused, I saw, the Orthodox Easter, which is the following weekend. So I booked their hotel for Orthodox Easter instead of just regular Easter, which is the one we usually celebrate. So I traveled out of town for Easter weekend, but my parents are coming next weekend and we will celebrate Easter together as a family. I'm going to start by swatching these shadows. That way I can feel the texture, kind of see how these colors translate on skin instead of in the pan. This usually helps me develop sort of a game plan for doing my makeup. Ooh, see that is a lot more gold than I thought it was going to be. Oh, and this peach is a lot more gold. Yeah, it's not quite as bright peachy pink as it looks in the pan. Coming down here in the bronze. That's pretty light as well but they're gorgeous and then let's see oh yeah same thing happened with the rose topaz the one deep shade in the palette comes through so these are our swatches this is what we're working with today i think it's a gorgeous palette this is so summery i picked up a refer 28 brush it's just a flat shape and i'm going into the peach first i'm going to apply these shadows a little bit different today than what I typically do. Usually I start with a matte, medium intensity brown in the crease, but we don't really have the perfect shadow for that. I'm going to try to do things a bit different. So I'm applying this to the lid. It took a minute, but now this shadow is building up really nicely. At first it was more sheer, but now it's very opaque. I know my Makeup Monday videos have been very Tom Ford heavy for the last few weeks because of the trip. Of course, I had so many new products to try. Nobody has complained yet. I was surprised. I figured somebody would say something, but it hasn't happened. I think this is probably one of the only Tom Ford products that I have for this video. Next, I picked up a Refer 14 brush and I'm going into the deep chocolatey shade. And this is going in the outer V, outer crease. They blend really nicely together. So with my original brush, I'm just kind of blending those two together. Now with a Refer 27 fluffy brush, I'm going into the top shade up here and I'm going to use this eyeshadow to help blend out the crease and blend out all of those other shadows. So I kind of did today's look a bit backwards. That deeper shade is very easy to blend. Even though it's so pigmented and intense, it's not really intimidating when you use it because you can still manipulate it once you apply it to the skin. It's not just stuck and then you go to blend it and everything looks patchy. Actually, it's very user-friendly for a dark shadow. Next, I just have to clean up the fallout. There was a
wasn't a lot, but there was a little bit on the top of my cheeks. Moving on now to foundation, I have the new Danessa Myricks Yummy Skin Serum Foundation. They sent over two shades, six and seven. I haven't tried this on my hand, but I just feel like six is going to be perfect. Or is it nine? Oh yeah, this is lighter. Okay, so I have shades seven and nine. Seven looks too light because I did sunless tan. I have a lot of lights on me right now, so it might not look like I'm tan, but my body has a lot of color. So I think I'm gonna go with the nine. It's kind of a funny bottle, so you have to screw off the top and then it's a squeezy tube. So you kind of think this just pops right off, but it doesn't. Let me just squeeze a little bit of this out. I can do a little swatch test and just make sure this is gonna work. Did that blend? Oh no, I think that's way too dark. Okay, well, maybe I can mix them. I think this will work. It feels really smooth. So it's a serum foundation. It has skincare benefits. And I've heard it does a great job covering, which is nice because I have a little breakout going on on my chin. The only thing I had on my face was moisturizer. It definitely covers everything. And I really like the glow. I probably used too much product because I was trying to mix to get the shade to be right. So next time I'll know to only use a teeny tiny bit of each, mix it together, and then I won't apply so much. But I think it looks really pretty. I just pulled up the Sephora app so I can read more information about this. The Yummy Skin Serum Foundation retails for $34, not a bad price. Liquid Formula Radiant Finish, it's vegan. It says medium coverage. I think it has more coverage than that. I would say full coverage. Maybe that's because I use too much product. I think you can sheer it out. You can use less, but it's pretty full coverage. Hydrating, and then there's a refill available. Oh, that's pretty cool. I didn't realize it was refillable packaging. I'm going back in with my LYS concealer, and I have a few other cream products that I need to apply before I set with powder. See, that blended really nice. I think everything is going to blend really beautifully on top of it. These two look really nice together. I was looking for my Danessa Myricks concealer. I thought it might make sense to try that on top of this foundation, but I couldn't find it. And that is so full coverage. It really does go on more like paint. So I'm not sure that would have been the best look. It's probably a good thing I couldn't find it. When I get back from California, top of the list is to organize my makeup collection. I have lost so many things. New items. I was going to try the new Gucci lipstick today. I can't find it. I just picked it up during the spring savings event, and I know I put it in one of the drawers, but I might as well have thrown it into a black hole. I have no idea where it went. Laura Mercier sent over all of her new tinted moisturizer blushes. So I have all of the shades here. There are so many beautiful colors. I tried them on the back of my hand. It seems like it goes on truly like a tinted moisturizer, but pink. So they're very sheer. I think I need a brighter, bolder color in order for it to really show up on my skin. So let's see, I think I'm gonna go in with Mistral today. It says, dab a dot or two along the apples of your cheeks, then blend out for a healthy wash of color. But do you see how that started pretty dark and then it got really light as I blended it? And that was one of the uh, medium shades. There are several that are even lighter than that. This one, La Piscine, I thought this looked beautiful. It's like a really pretty pale pink. Let me just try it. 
See, it's so pretty, but it's almost a little bit too subtle. Kind of wish it had a little bit more color, although it looks very pretty. Um, blush tends to fade on me throughout the day, so if it already looks like this, this is kind of ideal. I would hope that it would last looking this intense. But I'm just afraid because it's a tinted moisturizer and it is so lightweight. I think it will probably just melt into this foundation and I won't be able to see it. Although we'll see. I don't have a new bronzer to try. So I pulled out an old bronzer that I think I've only used a handful of times. This is from Iconic London. It's the Sheer Bronze. I thought this would be perfect with the Laura Mercier blushes. Ooh! Whoops, that's what happens when products just sit in the drawer. Let me give it a shake. Hopefully we can bring it back to life. I think it's separated in there. See, this is why I'm trying to use up more of my cream liquid products. They just do not last forever. <laughs> They'll last for a year or so, but if you're like me, ooh, there we go. If you just keep building your collection and you never touch them, one day you're going to go to use your liquid creams and they are not going to work. I think that is the easiest to blend blush and easiest to blend bronzer. So fast. I pulled out my Pat McGrath Lab Skin Fetish Sublime Perfection Powder Ooh, in the shade Light. I picked this up during the Sephora Sing Things event and I swear it is the most delicate powder. Every time I just tap into it with my brush, it just kind of puffs up a bunch of dust. But it looks so pretty on the skin. I don't want to completely get rid of that glow. That's This is kind of the struggle I always have. Because I have more normal skin, I like glow, but I can't be too dewy because if I'm running around outside, it's very hot and humid in Florida. You get natural glow from being exposed to the elements. So I like to set with powder when I first do my makeup because by the end of the day, I'm usually very dewy anyway. I just realized I didn't pull out a highlighter, so I just went to the top drawer and we're gonna use this new Tom Ford again. Well, new to me. This is Reflex Guilt. I love this gold shade, it looks so pretty. I'm only going to tap a tiny bit on my cheeks. I kind of want my glow to just come from the products, not a shimmery highlighter today. Going back into the Tiger Eye Palette, I picked up one of the little applicator tools that comes with the eyeshadow, and I'm taking the tapered sponge, and I'm going into the bronze shade. This is the only color we haven't used yet, and I'm going to apply this beneath the lower lash line. With the cleanest brush I could find, and there weren't many of them to choose from, I am just going to very carefully blend the outside of the eyeshadow. I want to make sure there are no harsh lines. Every day this building tests my patience. I think they're just doing a little landscaping out there. With a little precision brush, I'm picking up the gold. I'm going to pop that on the inner corner of the eye. Using my finger, I'm going to pop just a little bit of this gold right on the center of the lid. Just a little bit. I think it will look so pretty. Just kind of opens up the eye a bit. Rough dry is done, as you can see. Hair is looking extremely rough, but this is the new T3 Airbrush Duo. So there are two different attachments. You just press the unlock button, turn, and you can remove. 
So very easy, depending on if you want kind of a round brush style blowout, or if you prefer something a little bit more sleek and straight, you can go on with this brush and it just clicks right in there. You have a couple different temperature settings and airflow settings, so you can make it really fast, really light. There's also a cool shot here on the back. So it's pretty intuitive. It's not difficult to use. I've never really used an airbrush blow dryer brush in one type of product. So I'm very excited about this, but T3 is currently having their friends and family sale. I believe everything on their website is 20% off. So if you are in the market for new hair tools, I would recommend checking them out. I use my T3 wand, the World Trio, every single time I style my hair. I also have the curling iron. I love that as well, but I just stick to the wand because it's so fast and easy but I am so excited to test this out. So this should give me a much smoother, sleek blow dry. And then if I wanna go in with my hot tool, I can, but if not, I can just have a nice blowout. I think you can tell there is a noticeable difference between the two sides. The rough dry is a lot frizzier, but this side is nice and sleek and smooth and touchable and I love it. I used the third heat setting because it was my first time and I just didn't want it to get too hot. But I think I could probably go up to four the next time around, but this feels really good. What I love about it is that it kind of frees up an extra hand. I will probably, well, yes, I'm definitely going to go in with my hot tool after this. Where it will really help me is when I'm done with my blow dryer, I usually go in with a round brush. This is your round brush hair dryer all in one. So it does kind of free up your hand. It's a lot faster, easier to maneuver. And I really like it. I could see myself using it every single time I style my hair now, and I just don't have to worry about using my round brush. With the round brush, sometimes I feel a lot of knots in my hair, and I need to go in and just kind of gently brush them out. I don't know why, but with this tool, I didn't run into any knots at all. I don't know if it's because it has like the comb and the bristles all in one, but I didn't get stuck on any of my hair and I didn't even brush my hair before I got in the shower. So that is very impressive to me. My hair is now completely styled for the day. So the very last step is lips. It does not matter what order I do everything else, lips has to come very last. I don't know why, that's just the rule. I think it's something in my head. I'm still gutted I couldn't find my new Gucci lipstick so I could do a full review. I did try it on the other day. Like as soon as I purchased, I went ahead and just tried it on my lips and I was kind of torn. It has a terrible smell. It did not smell nice at all. The color was pretty and I thought it looked nice but I really need to properly test it out. So that will be another project. Hopefully today before I leave, I can find that lipstick. This is another new lipstick that I purchased during Sephora Spring Savings event. It's by Mario. This is the Ultra Suede Lipstick in the shade Erin. It was completely sold out at my local Sephora, so I had to order it online. And it's a really pretty nude, very matte. So I like it paired with a lip liner and a gloss on top. Do you see, it's kind of a, like a mauve taupey nude. It's very pretty, I love the color. But on me personally, I think it just needs a pink lip liner. The Pillow Talk lip liner is perfect. And then I am going to top that off with just a little lip gloss. This is one of the new Laura Mercier lip balm gloss combinations. It's the Lip Glossé in shade 60, Cream Caramel. They sent me a few shades and I haven't tried them yet. I was so sad to see they changed these because I love opal blush. There are a few shades from the old Laura Mercier lip gloss that I love. Ooh, see this is a little bit more peachy pink. I don't wanna completely change the color. I just want to add a little warmth and then a little hydration because I don't like a really matte lip. Oh, wow.
See, this, I think, is the perfect nude lip combo. Ooh, ooh, I think we discovered something good. <laughs> this is the final look for the day. My hair and makeup is finished. And overall, I must say, I think I loved everything. There's nothing that didn't work. I do think now that everything's done, I wish the blush was a little bit more pigmented simply because I can't really see it right now and I know that hours from now it will be even lighter. But I love the Yummy Skin Serum Foundation. I love the Tiger Eye Palette from Tom Ford. This lip combination looks so plump and juicy but still kind of natural. It's like sort of a natural nude but ultra glam nude at the same time. I'm biased. <laughs> Let me just throw that out there. I am biased. I wanted to love this lipstick, but I wasn't sure. That's why it took me so long to buy it. As soon as I saw a lipstick with the name Erin, I thought, ooh, that sounds cute. But the photo online looked so dull, almost like a stone. I just had to skip it. When I saw it in store and I swatched it on my hand, I thought, oh, that's really pretty. And then it was sold out. So I didn't really know what to expect. I was pleasantly surprised. And I do think with the right lip liner and gloss, it could be your everyday lipstick shade. Probably should be my everyday lipstick shade. Yeah, I love all of the new products that I tested today. Very happy with everything. For now, that completes today's video. Thank you so much for watching. Hopefully you enjoyed it. If you liked it, give it a thumbs up. Leave me your comments, questions down below. If you have any other Makeup Monday recommendations or suggestions, drop them in the comment section. My plan for next week is to do a full face of my all-time favorite luxury products. And then maybe the following week, I wanna do a video with like forgotten luxury products. That will probably come after I'm done reorganizing my drawer because there are some luxury items that I love and I know I used to talk about them all the time and they've just kind of fallen to the back of the drawer. I've just sort of forgotten about them and I would love to dig them out again and play around and experiment. I'm open to all of your suggestions and ideas. As always, I will be linking everything mentioned. Everything on my face will be listed down below in the description box for your convenience. And for more videos like this, don't forget to subscribe and hit the notification bell.